So you've heard of a victory garden, but you don't know where to start? Today on Wild Florida, we're gonna be talking about the tools and materials you need to start a victory garden in a snap. Hi, I'm Jacqueline, the Wild Floridian, and welcome to my nine part series on victory gardens, where we're gonna go from a lawn to a victory garden in a snap. This is so you can increase your food security while reducing costs in a time of crisis. If this is your first time joining us and you want to start from the beginning, go ahead and click on this card right here, or you can wait till the end and a box will appear in one of these four corners and you can start after clicking that. All right, let's get into it. Let's talk about the tools and materials that you need so that you can start your victory garden. So before we jump into the tools and materials, I just want to remind you of why we're here, right? It's increasing food security while reducing costs in a time of crisis. And why that's important is because some people may say, well, you could get something that was cheaper or you could get something that's more perfect. What I'm trying to recommend to you is where we have the intersection of efficiency and cost right? So while you could get something cheaper, usually that'll take you more time, or you could get something more perfect, but that'll take more money. So we're going to try to get in this sweet spot of minimizing costs while increasing and get you food security as fast as possible. Right? Right. Okay. So let's get into the five different groupings of things that we're going to cover today. The first is going to be tools that we need for starting our garden bed. The second will be the materials that we're gonna use. The third are gonna be the hand tools for planting and maintaining our plants. The fourth is just gonna be miscellaneous items that you will see throughout the series that you might need but don't necessarily need to have. And the fifth, well, because you may be totally new to gardening, I wanna make sure you know what gear you should be wearing. And no, I don't mean my Star Wars shirt. I'm talking about some of those necessary items that you probably need and should be thinking about early on. Okay, let's go. So let's talk about the first category, the tools that you need for your garden bed. And the first up, this is my most favorite tool to go and use. This is the one that I would say is the most versatile. It can clear garden beds, it can get rid of the grass, it can remove weeds, it can get rid of roots, it can chop them, it can pull up those tough ones, it can make big holes, it can make little holes. Is it magic? No, it's the mattock. The mat, what? Yes, the mattock. Now this tool isn't very commonly used in America, but abroad, it's much more common. Even farmers use it on places that only have one acre and it might be the only tool they use. Say what? This magical thing, you must be thinking, it must be $300, it must be $1,000, but no, you can get it for the low, low price of $25. Yes, that's right. And I'll put the links below for the ones that I have or like items for all the things that I'm talking about in the description below. But yes, you can get this from Home Depot for $25. So if you only were going to have one tool in this whole series, I would say you should get the Maddox because it is versatile. It can do a lot and it packs a lot of punch because it gives you the leverage to go and do tough jobs for a low, low cost. The next three items that I'm gonna talk about are really all about what we're gonna be using to move the materials, and it's three different main items. The first up is gonna be the most expensive item I'm going to talk to you about, and that is a yard cart. A yard cart, they can come in a lot of different sizes, but the one that I'm recommending is $99. And the reason I'm recommending this one is because it can hold enough weight to make each trip that you have to go do be worth it, but not so expensive that it's oversized and you really don't need that. There are bigger ones, there are smaller ones. I like ones that you can pull behind you more like a wagon versus push. And the reason is, is I've used push one before and what you'll find is, is the weight just tips so much, you end up pushing forward and dumping at whatever's in there really fast. And that's not what you wanna be doing, right? Cause it's hard work. I know some people say that gardening is a light activity, but it is not. It is a full on core exercise from your toes to your head or head to toe. You pick your choice. So what you can be doing with it and why I like this yard cart is not only because you can move materials such as dirt and mulch and you can put your plants in it, your kids in it, pick your choice, but you also can dump with it. So I like that it has this lever action so that you can pick and dump, which makes it a lot easier so that especially when you're moving big materials like gravel or anything like that, you're not touching them twice. You basically put it in, move it, dump it. And then once it's on the ground, you use our next item, which is a rake. Now this rake is, I don't usually use the long side, I typically use the short side, but sometimes I use the long side when I'm breaking up dirt. So I actually use both sides. And what I use that for is then pushing whatever material around that I've been using in my yard cart um, to put it in this place and then even it all out. So I recommend that and you can get it for 
$17. And the third thing is of course my pitchfork. And I use that a lot because I get a lot of wood chips and that will be one of the materials we'll talk about in a second. So I need something that can move it quickly into my yard cart and so that I can get done with all that mulch pretty quick, right? Right. So that will usually cost you about $38 for the one that I have from Home Depot. So where does that put our total right now? Well, if we just take, throw a little bit of the change in, it's about $185. It's kind of a lot of money, especially if you don't have any money. We'll do a whole nother video on having no money and how to go do a victory garden. And now let's move into the next part, which is the materials for building our victory garden. So there are two main materials I'm going to talk about. One is gardening soil and the second is going to be mulch, specifically wood chips. So let's first talk about the soil. So for a standard bed, which we say is about four feet by eight feet, and of course you can have your heart's desire and build all sorts of different sizes, but for just easy math, I'm gonna use that size. We're gonna buy about three giant bags of soil, and those are gonna run about $8 a piece for about $24 per bed. So we'll just round it to 25 to make my life easier as I add up all the math as we go along. Now you can buy these from big box stores, and of course there are alternatives to getting bulk soil, but if we're just talking about one bed, this would be the most efficient way to do it at $25. Now, the next part is gonna be our mulch or wood chips. So I always get in a truckload because I just really like mulch a lot. And I use it a lot because this is gonna help us suppress our weeds, retain water and build soil and just make it prettier. So I always get it by the truckload, which you could do the same with the soil. And, but even if you weren't gonna just use this on your victory garden, you could use this with a whole bunch of neighbors, but you can get it completely free from a website called Chip Drop. And I'll put that link again down below. So where does that bring our total? That brings us to $210. Okay, slow down, don't worry. It's not gonna get that much more expensive. So let's move into the third section, which is gonna be the hand tools that we're gonna to use for planting and maintaining our plants. The first one is gonna be a hand fork. A hand fork can run you about $7, and what you can use it for is for spacing out your plants, putting in quick little holes for putting your seeds in as we go and plant them, um, and they run about $7. The next one would be your hand shovel. This is really good for when you're doing transplants, so if you got one of those small little things, right, small little plants that you buy from the store, you would use typically a hand shovel, or if you're trying to relocate a plant, hand shovel. They'll run you for about 5 to $6. And of course, then there's pruning shears. Uh, you need those for thinning. Thinning means just killing some of your baby plants. Pruning, which means just cutting back some of the leaves um, and opening up your bags of soil. I just use them like they're scissors outside. And those will run you for a good pair around $10. So we could put that together. So let's call it six plus seven is 13 plus 10 is 23. $23 for all of that plus a little tax. So let's just round it to 25. Now for about $5 more, you could get a whole garden bag set like this. This one I actually bought for my son for him to help me with gardening and I borrow it all the time. And it comes with a couple extra pieces like a spray bottle and like this weed remover I've never used but he just plays with now. And I think another shovel and a garden rake and I don't use any of those things but they sit in the bag. But the bag's really nice because I can carry a bunch of stuff like my gloves in them and other things. So yeah, so for $5 more, you could basically get a whole bunch more stuff. So I would really recommend that. So now, Let's go add all that up. So the total goes from 210 now to 240. Okay, all right, slowing down, right? All right, let's move into the fourth category, which are the other miscellaneous items that you're gonna see throughout the series. So one is gonna be, you'll see Ben chopping away with a special type of machete, which runs about mm, $35. So we like this type because it uses the typical action of a machete, but also has that hook on it for helping pull up roots. We actually removed a ton of bushes years ago using this tool. It was very difficult, but actually very effective compared to a lot of other tools. If I had a mattock at the time, I probably would have used that. But this machete has been helpful with knocking back our banana plants and all other sorts of miscellaneous items. The next set of tools that you're gonna see is probably gonna be the hedge trimmers. You'll see us chopping up some palms and you can use them for pruning back some of your bigger items like bushes. Not necessary, but they run you about $29. Another tool that you'll see us using is a handsaw. They run you about $18. They're really good for getting those thicker branches, um, cutting down your areca palms, which you'll see later on, or something similar to a bamboo. So usually if you've got something that's about that thick, that would be about the right size for switching over from your hedge trimmers over to a handsaw. 
And last but not least, you have to think about watering your Victory Garden. So something to consider, if you have sprinklers, you may be able to just use that. Or if you already have a hose, which to get a large one, you can get them for about 10 to $20, or you can just get yourself a watering can for about $10. They're all options. I typically use my sprinklers and I generally time planting a new garden bed right before the rainy season. So it just rains and then it gets watered. And I don't have to remember it because remember, it's about increased efficiency with reduced cost. Taking advantage of nature is always the most effective. And now let's talk about the final section, which is the gear that you wear. And let's start first with your feet. So in order to make sure you protect those feet, you should be wearing something like this, some stomping boots. I like these ones by Timberland. I'm not gonna put the pricing or find it because they're very specific to size and you might not like this specific type. But I look for things that are waterproof, that protect from my ankles all the way to my toes. Mine just happen to be stainless steel because I have them from work. Um, but especially when you're using something like a mattock, you really wanna make sure you have foot protection. So the next thing you wanna make sure is you think about is skin. You need to protect your skin, whether it's just from the sun with sunscreen or consider bug spray because you're going to be outside and all the bugs might not want you there and might be willing to sting and bite you. So the next thing you need to think about protecting is your eyes. So make sure that you're wearing things like sunglasses and a hat to protect your eyes from the sun. Also considering when you wear your sunglasses when you're doing things like using Maddox or moving a lot of big material like dirt, that because you're lifting and shifting it, it may fling up particles that could get in your eyes. Also, when you're doing a lot of stuff on the ground, I highly recommend a hat because sunglasses will tend to fall down off your face, or at least mine do because they're free and maybe others won't, and maybe yours are better, but definitely make sure you got a hat. And last but not least, we've got to protect our hands. So I highly recommend that you get some garden gloves. You can usually get them for five to $10. The ones that you're gonna see me wearing are actually metal working gloves. Why? Well, because my gardening gloves got whole one time and I just grabbed them and I like the fact that they have Kevlar in them. I don't know. I just use them. They cost about $11. You can get them at Home Depot or one of the big box stores. So where does that all add up? Okay, so if we put it all together, that comes up to about $250 for the first garden bed. Now that might seem like a lot of money, but remember a lot of those things are one-time investments. And because we're gonna do a different video on how to do it for no to little cost, well, hang on if you, that feels like that's a little too much. You'll also notice we didn't cover plant costs or what you should be planting. Well, there's gonna be a whole video just dedicated to that, but I wanted to get you guys started on this first because if you gotta go get some of these materials before we go and build our first bed, well, I wanted you to have some time to go and get them. So that brings us to what's gonna be our next episode. Well, our next episode's gonna be on how to build your Victory Garden bed. And that's what we're gonna be doing next. So to make sure you don't miss it, go ahead and like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. Typically new videos each week, but now we're gonna be doing video each day for five days to get through our nine part series. And while you wait, if you're looking for other videos to go and check out and you wanna dig deeper into growing food, go ahead and check out the Growing Food is Easy Challenge series or you can check out one of our other videos. I'll see you soon. Bye.